And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. What is it like for a man to know his own future and to be able to prepare for his own fatal accident? Listen now to The Time, The Place, and The Death, written by Peter Fernandez. There it is again, senor. There it is. Yes, yes, the ace of spades. Never have I seen anything more positive. Three times through the cars, and they turn up in this same sequence. This, then, is a warning to me? A warning? Oh, no, senor. This is a fact. This is a prediction of the inevitable. No. But you have seen for yourself three times. Yes, that's true. But to die now in the prime of life in perfect health? Who can dispute fate? I am sorry, senor, but you are fortunate that you know now. Do not question further. Accept. You will be happier. Accept? Happy? To know that very soon I will cease to live? Happy to know that only about two weeks are all that remain to me of this exquisite life? Would you care to go through the cards again, senor? No, no, thank you. How much do I owe you? Oh, no charge. Instead, I wish to offer you my deepest sympathy. <laughs> Why, Henry. Good afternoon, Irene. How nice to see you. And on a Tuesday. Tuesday isn't one of your usual days. I trust I'm not causing you any uh, inconvenience by dropping in unexpectedly like this. I'm quite alone, Henry. Good. I have some sensational, some marvelous news for you, my dear. And amusing, I'd say, from that smile you can't quite conceal. My dear Irene, have you ever wondered where and under what circumstances you will die? Uh, Henry, what a funny question. I don't intend to be funny. Oh, you know what I mean. Irene. Yes, dear. I am going to die. Oh, Henry, you paid some gypsy to tell you that, and I would have told you for nothing. Everybody dies eventually. I mean that I'm going to die sometime in the very near future. This card, this ace of spades, is my proof. This card, this exact card, turned up three times this afternoon. Oh. Three times. Following a sequence of other cards, which also was revealed three times. It's a fact, Irene... I'm going to die very soon. Oh, my poor, poor Henry. Sympathy? You fail to comprehend, Irene. As a matter of fact, it took me a while to get used to it. But now, don't you see, I've never been happier. How could you possibly be happy? Because I've never been able to face the future blindly, I've always sought oracular advice. And I'm happy that I know my death will be soon. Now I must also know the details. The details? Henry, you're giving me the shudder. And may I have a pencil and some paper? Oh, yes, yes, of course. When I was 22 years old, it's quite some time ago, I visited my first fortune teller. Invest all your money in AT&T, she told me. Well, I'd saved about $700, and I invested it. I'm now worth considerably more than that. I know you are, darling. Okay, here's your paper and pencil. Thank you. Then there have been numerous romantic interludes during which I've dallied with the temptation of marriage. But in every instance, my dear Irene, I've been saved by a seer. Unfortunately. Uh, what are you writing there, Henry? A list. There are so many possibilities of how I'll die, I'd like to consider them. But this is all I have so far. Number one, accident. I mean, no matter how carefully one crosses the streets, these days he risks his life. A strong possibility. Number two, crime. I'm a gentleman of considerable means. Oh, yes, indeed, darling. <laughs> but isn't that list rather unnecessary, Henry? After all, if you want to be absolutely certain of just how you'll die, why don't you commit suicide? What an absurd suggestion. Well, then pay someone to do the job. I really... Oh, well, frankly, dear, I think you should forget the whole thing. No, I'd better be going, and I'll take this list. I can add to the possibilities as they occur to me. Now, here, my dear, take this money. 
Why, Henry? It should be sufficient to buy an attractive uh, dress, which you must wear to my funeral. Well, uh, Good afternoon, Irene. Good afternoon, Henry. In just a moment, we will return for the concluding act of Suspense. Here's Hollywood star Mona Freeman. Who feels like acting with a miserable cold? I relieve cold distress the fast way with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains and headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When a cold strikes, do what I do. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Had dandruff for years? Now get rid of it in three minutes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch. Embarrassing dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave hair up to 35% brighter. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. Oh. Who's that? What's going on? Miss oh. Chippendale. Miss Chippendale. Oh. You're right, sir. Yes. Uh, come here, quick. Um, bring some water. Your, your gentleman friend uh, had an accident. Oh, my goodness. It's coming, Ruby. Oh, please, sir, please. It's all my fault. I, I should have fixed that step. Please, sir. Oh. Is, is, is he dead, Ruby? I don't think so. He told me something like this would happen. Not two minutes ago, he told me. Oh, here, there's water for my vase of flowers. Oh. His eyes are open. Here, sit. Sit up. Sit up. Oh, oh thank you. Henry, are you all right? I... Uh, Irene? Yes, dear. Uh, have I died? Oh, thank goodness, no, Henry. Now, you see, that ace of spades was wrong after all. I don't think it was. It's that fourth step from the land, and when the weather is damp, it warps, and the edge sticks out a little. Uh, some other people have tripped on that step, Well, then why I, I haven't thought... you fixed it, Ruby? You're the janitor. Oh, I've tried, Miss Chippendale, but the lumber yard was out of the right kind of wood. My list. I don't need it now. I know everything now. I know the place and the circumstances. You do? Yes. I'm going to die as a result of that fault in the stairway. What? Really, Henry? Well, but don't you see? Fate has given me a warning. The rest is up to me. I must now fix the date and arrange the details for afterwards. Having escaped death once under such miraculous conditions, I'll never escape a second time. Why, well, imagine just an inch or two from that knob. The lumberyard said they're getting a shipment in next week. Then I can fix that step. If you do, my good man, you'll have to answer to me. What? Good afternoon. <laughs> It's impossible, Henry. Nobody can foretell the future, except perhaps the weatherman, and you know how accurate he is. Take my advice and forget all about it. Oh, it's your shot. My dear friend, I've received a warning, which I believe. I'm in a very enviable position. I'm now able to arrange a suitable date for my death. It can be any day upon which I decide, and the appointment must be kept. Ah. Oh, good shot, Henry. Tomorrow? No, tomorrow's too soon. But um, next Friday. Ah, Friday. That would be a fine day on which to die. Next Friday isn't any good, Henry. Why not? That's my usual day for visiting Irene. Oh, but of course. How forgetful of me. Well, I don't wish to die on Saturday. There are too many interesting parties I might attend. Sunday. The day will be Sunday. Perfect. They can bury me on Wednesday. 
Oh, another good shot, Henry. Now I must see my lawyer about a will at once. I'm leaving almost everything to dear Irene. Uh, oh, you are? Well, I can't leave a penniless. Uh, no, no, of course not, of course not. And then I must arrange for the funeral, the burial, so many last-minute details. Perhaps I won't have time ever to see you again, unless you can be in Irene's apartment with her next Sunday for our farewell. Well, I... Uh... In fact, Joseph, I'd like you to be there at, uh, shall we say, 5.30. I'll descend the stairs to my death at 5.52. Yes, fives and twos always have been benevolent numbers for me. Uh, yes, uh, you... Yes, sir. Uh, I'll be there, my dear Henry. And on Wednesday, uh, of course, you'll attend my funeral. Of course, of course. And uh, I shall mourn for you deeply. Splendid. The funeral will be at three o'clock. Oh, three o'clock. Oh, but, 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 Henry, that's the afternoon they'll be judging the Terriers at the Westminster. And I've registered both Tristan and Isolde. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm dreadfully sorry, but I, I just can't. I, I... I am sorry, too, Joseph. But at least can I expect you to be at Irene's on Sunday? Uh, on, on Sunday? Oh, yes, Henry, yes. Uh, I shall be there. <laughs> Good evening, Irene. Joseph, it's so late. Uh, may, may, may I come in? Oh, of course. Oh, my darling Joseph. Irene, my love. I'm so very glad to see you. Irene, I just left Henry. He thinks he's going to die. Yeah, I know all about it. Another one of his fortunes. But, but he's going to make all the arrangements. He... He actually believes well, it. Well, it's possible, you know. I've heard of stranger things. But, but hold dear, me, dear, Joseph. Oh, hold me. Hold yes, me close, yes, dear. Yes, yes, yes. Like this? Mm. Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> listen to me, Irene. Mm. When Henry dies, he'll leave all his money to you. Uh, how do you know that? He, he told me. He told me that he's having his will drawn up. When he dies... You'll be a rich woman, Irene. Oh, but that's such a vague possibility, Joseph. When he dies. <laughs> you mean if he dies. Irene, he will die. You, you sure? I need his money as much as you do. I'm going to make sure. Joseph. On the day he has planned for his death, we will kill him. Oh, Joseph. How? Poison. He will come here to descend those stairs. We will have a drink. A final sad farewell drink. His will be well laced with us. But the police will know. That his drink was poison, of course. Good, that's what we want. Because he will have made all those preparations. They will decide that he committed suicide. There'll be no way for them to know otherwise. <laughs> what do you think now? I think, my darling, that you and I will both someday soon be very, very wealthy. Yes, sir. Is there some way I can help you, or would you rather look around? I wish to order one of these. Oh, yes, sir. Is there any special kind of wood you desire? If only I knew what kind of wood that stairway is made of, that might be rather suitable. Ah, uh, but it too might warp. Uh, I desire mahogany. Mm, I'll just write this down. Yes, and uh, the trimming, sir. Silver. I want a first-class funeral. Very well. Uh, $2,000 certainly will take care of everything, sir. Excellent. I'll make you out a check for the amount right now. Oh, that's perfectly all right, sir. Just a deposit will be sufficient. Uh, you can mail the balance to us later. But I won't be able to later. You see, uh, the coffin and the service are for myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke. I am not joking. I am dying on Sunday. I want to be buried next Wednesday. I believe you're serious, sir. I assure you I am. Forgive me. I understand. Goodbye. You'll be given a magnificent send-off. Uh, goodbye, sir. And good luck. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. May I help you? Wait. Let me make a guess. I'd say that you're a man searching for an exquisite boutonniere. I wish to order a floral wreath. Oh. 
Oh, yes, sir. It is to have a diameter of five feet. Uh, yes, sir. Five. With a blue ribbon. Blue? Blue. And the flowers are to be orchids. Orchids? On a wreath? It's my favorite flower. The wreath will be delivered next Monday to the address on this card. Now, about the inscription. Uh, yes, yes, on the ribbon. It's to say, to myself, sincerely. Uh, beg your pardon? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, change that to read, to myself, uh, with great love. Oh? Uh, yes, sir. Perhaps there's nobody who thinks as highly of me as I do. Uh, no, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I'll take the boutonniere now. The black one. I shall miss myself. Irene. He should be here any moment. Yes, yes I know. And he's never late. No. Here. Here's the capsule with the arsenic. Oh, it looks so harmless, doesn't it? Now, when he comes in, offer him this drink. Then break this capsule with your fingernail right here. Uh -huh. And pour all of the contents into his glass. There's enough here to fell an ox. Such a little thing. Now, think of tomorrow, darling. Think of all his money. Oh, that's all I've thought of for years. There he is. Ah, then quick, put this next to the liquor bottle. Yes, yes. Uh, how's this? Good, good, good. He'll never notice. Now, answer the door. Joseph, I'm afraid. There'll be nothing to it. As soon as he drinks the arsenic, we'll just call the police and it'll all be over. Hurry. Oh. Good afternoon, Irene. Hello, Henry. Come in, my dear. Thank you. And Joseph. I'm so pleased that you could arrange to be here. Hello, Henry. Sit down, dear. Thank you. Hmm. You're looking very well, Henry. Certainly not like a man who's spending the last few minutes of his life. It's a beautiful day, Joseph. And I had a delightful lunch earlier. Couron de canard au riz de la Normande. It was perfection. Then why don't you go back to the same restaurant tomorrow? Why go through with all this today? Because I must. But I rather regret leaving on a day like this. Well, then why not change your plans? Forget all this nonsense and have a few friendly drinks with Irene and me. Henry, don't, don't leave. I must. Oh, Henry, think of what you're doing to me. What will become of me? I'll be so lonely when you're gone. Oh, there, there, Irene. Oh, Henry. As for being lonely, I'm sure Joseph will be pleased <laughs> to add another usual night to his schedule. What? Oh, yes. Yes, of course, of course. Now, aren't you feeling better, dear? Yes, yes, much. But, Henry, there is one thing more before you go. One last favor to me. Name it, my dear. Here's a drink, Henry. I want us to have a last sad drink together. You needn't have enough to... To spoil your death. No, there isn't time. It's now 5.49. I've never been late for an appointment in my life. I have only three more minutes. I must go. Wait. And, uh, Joseph, thank you for the many games of billiards, for the fine friendship of all these years. But, but Henry... And you'll be sure to send me a spray of orchids on Wednesday. But, but Henry, I insist that you have a drink with us. Farewell, Joseph. Uh, Henry! Oh, this is it. Yes, yes, I can see that step, the fourth from the bottom. Now. It'll be such a perfect funeral, and that cemetery plot, eternal beauty there, a perfect life, and now a perfect death. The next one is the next step. I'll close my eyes and step off into space. Goodbye. Goodbye, beautiful world. Good heavens. You made it okay, huh? You fixed that step. I did not. I got the wood, but today's Sunday. I don't work on Sunday. Then the step is no longer warped. It's just the same as the day you fell. But you were so careful today, even when you shut your eyes. I stood over there watching you. You didn't trip even a little. You went so carefully that, Henry? that I... Henry! 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 Well, you're all right. You're, you're not dead. Dead? No, Joseph. Oh, that... 
then nothing happened? Oh, I saw images of my childhood. My whole past flashed before me. And then I realized that this afternoon, just now, I escaped my own death. That's true. And now, don't you see? Now, I shall live forever. Oh, no. Well, this certainly calls for a celebration, Henry. Oh, from now on, every day will be a celebration. Mm -hmm. Here's your drink, Henry. Thank you. Irene. Yes, dear. There's something I must do first before anything else. Uh, what's that? I must telephone. I'll put my drink down right here, and uh, it won't take a moment. Uh, but, 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 Henry, uh, I'd like to propose a toast to you. Well, then go right ahead, Joseph. It would be bad luck for me to drink my own toast. But, but, but Henry... Hello. Oh, dear. Is this the funeral director? This is Henry Perth Johnson. Uh, you're expecting my body in a short while. Well, I've decided to cancel all the arrangements. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, no, I didn't die. Uh, no, I'm in the best of health. Next week? No. My good man canceled it permanently. Thank you. Henry, Henry. Now wait, Joseph, before you make a toast to me, I would like to propose one to both of you. Irene, do something. It mustn't happen. No, Henry. What's the matter? Uh, here, here give, give me that glass. <laughs> I'll make a fresh drink for but you, Henry. I haven't Henry. even touched this drink yet. A toast. Give it to me, Henry, please. Well, Why? Is there something wrong with it? Oh, no, 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 no. It, it, it's just... There's a strange smell to this drink. Oh. Reminiscent of uh, gardens in summer and uh, rose arbors and... Uh... Ah, now I recognize it. Arsenic. Hmm? Arsenic. Arsenic. Uh. Decidedly... Surely you realize that I cannot die now, under any circumstances. Yes, we realize. Here you are, Henry. A fresh drink, and I'll take that glass. Thank you. Henry, sweet, sweet Henry. Will you ever be able to forgive us? Forgive? I've already forgotten. To you, Irene, and you, Joseph, my closest and my dearest. Suspense. You've been listening to The Time, The Place, and The Death. Written for Suspense by Peter Fernandez. In a moment, the names of our players and the word about next week's story of Suspense. Are you out of tune due to irregularity? Then help yourself get back in tune with Kellogg's All Brand. Pleasant, isn't it? The feeling of well-being you get when constipation from lack of bulk is no longer a worry. When harsh, irritating drug laxatives can be thrown away. Because Kellogg's All Brand is the normal, natural way to regularity. Its whole brand content gentles away constipation, supplies your system with the bulk-forming food you need for youthful regularity. And it tastes good, too. Fact is, Kellogg's All Brand is the one and only whole brand cereal that combines proved effectiveness with appetizing taste and crispness. So if you're out of tune, help yourself get back in tune, as millions do, with Kellogg's All Brand. A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Brand. Heard in tonight's story were Eric Dressler as Henry, Claudia Morgan as Irene, and Mercer McLeod as Joseph. Others in our cast included Bryna Rayburn, Maurice Tartlin, Peter Fernandez, and Dwight Wiest. Listen again next week when we return with Turnabout, written for suspense by Jay Bennett. Another tale well calculated to keep you in. Suspense.